Welcome and everybody to another build highlight video that I want to show you today. This time it's gonna be a hashtag dead build my warlock. So this is a lightning doom boat and lightning devastation warlock. Focusing around the storm herald dagger, the new dagger from the storm herald that you can farm in the emulation near the deadman skulls rift. And also the coerced wraith offhand which you can farm in act 7. Thus the build features a maxed out doom bolt with a bunch of modifiers to it for single target damage and also a almost maxed out devastation with some minor modifiers for AoE and also a 19 out of 12 star pack for 14% CDR for both devastation and doom bolt. But yeah, unfortunately I died on the character due to a piloting mistake against Father Kaimon so here I'm gonna show you like some of the last moments of the character as well as talk about skill location and gear and devotions later in Grim Tools. Nevertheless, I still hope you guys enjoy the video and have fun. I would have to come back. <laughs> come. I could also die to the messenger. I don't know. Oh, wait. Yeah, like, please stop talking to me, dude. I'm fighting. I'm like, literally fighting him right now. Like, don't tell me what to do. Also, why is there a skeleton? Wait. I'm gonna try to not kill him and then show you that the gun out. Death. Yep. Yep. Death. Oh, he despawned now. There was a skeletal archer like in here, secret agent hiding in the wall. Oh yeah, this guy is gonna not take any damage, right? And he's getting healed as well, monk cast. Dude. Fucking flame there, restaurant. Stop it. He's gonna hurt, right? I am sorry, What the fuck? How did I actually die to him? <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even press cluster, dude. Really? <laughs> the fuck? Okay, I actually didn't expect this. I actually didn't expect this. Holy oh, fuck. So even though I fucked up in the Kaiman fight and the build died due to a piloting error on my side, I still think it's a pretty good and at least an overall decent build. And here in Grim Tools, we can still take a look at the character. So we are a Oculus and an Arcanist, right? So let's check out the skill allocation first. Obviously, we want to max out Doom Bolt. This is like the main damage ability of this build for single target. Then we have one point into Curse of Frailty. You could also like put some more points here. You can see that I was still missing four points. So I could like pump this up for like more duration, more radius if you would like to. Then I had 14 points into vulnerability. This is pretty nice because it is both a resistance reduction and also a DA reduction. And also because we are a single RR mastery only because Arcanus basically doesn't have any resistance reduction. We want to actually overcap this to, well, put this to the highest amount of points that we can put it at. So yeah, 14 out of 10 it is here. Then we have Blood of Drig at 17 out of 16 for OA and heal. Then we have 12 out of 12 Expert of the Guardian for the 12% physical resistance and also 100% potent asset resistance. And that's basically already it for the Oculus side of things. Other things I could see that might be useful on a build like this are maybe Bloody Fox and Wasting for like the OA debuff and also if you have like maybe some vitality to lightning conversion globally. Or maybe the Sigil as well if you somehow convert that to lightning as well. But in this case I don't have that so it's not that great. Let's move over to Arcanist. So Arcanist is well kind of the main mastery here even though Oculus Doom Bolt is like the main skill. Arcanist has a secondary main skill or like the main skill for AoE. Devastation in this case we convert 100% Aether to lightning by the offhand and also have a smaller radius here because of the offhand as well which actually makes it a little bit worse for AoE but at the same time if you like reduce target area on this ability you will have better single target damage. Now the problem of the build was how to get the remaining fire to lightning conversion and I actually don't have too many slots for that. I basically only have 
up to 30% fire to lightning conversion on the amulet because other slots that have fire to lightning conversion would for example include the main hand and that is locked through the storm herald dagger and that's probably also one of the main reasons why the build didn't quite perform quite as well as i hope it would because yeah i don't convert like all of the fire to lightning here i actually only convert like a small amount of the fire to lightning here devastation is still pretty good at 25 out of 16 though even with like not fully converted fire to lightning and it's definitely worth using here if you want to play around the lightning devastation as well there are obviously other ways to make the dagger work such as for example on a conjurer then you can just use the storm totem and like wind devils for aoe and also like additional damage right also I'm using obviously it's kind of a limited exchange line so one point here 15 points of the overload for the oa and aether rest, 12 points in the elemental balance for the crit damage and also well, dot damage which actually I don't really need that badly I don't really deal any dot damage to be honest on this world um, 12 out of 12 mirror of erectors for well good cooldown on this mirror you could also like put this down to 7 and like max the notification start but I think what I wanted to do like for the last 4 points is I wanted to like soft cap notification and also soft cap mirror at the same time. Next up I have Maven's Sphere of Protection I mean this is like a must have on every Arcanist for endgame you want to max this out for sure and then also 9 points of the conversion for the CC resistances. Also I'm using 1 pointer in Calendar Sandpast and a pointer to the Wrath of Agrax to give this like a cooldown. Because, well, I do convert like Aether to Lighting to Fire to Lighting here as well through the Amulet. But on top of that, this works very very well together with Time Dilation, like a Celestial Power Time Dilation. So in the end this is basically just used as a Time Dilation button. 15 out of 12 in a focus, well, we are a caster and we are an Arcanist, so like Spirit Dumping is pretty decent, and if you want to Spirit Dump, then you want to max it in a focus, right? One pointed Arcane Will, because, yeah, I think only one point is needed here. One pointed Metal Alacrity, because, yeah, we don't really need the caster speed that badly, but it does help a little bit, so like one point is fine for 5%. And also one pointed Fabric of Reality for the 4% racial damage towards Ethereals, Aether Corruptions, and Chthonians. And as I mentioned earlier, 10 points to notification ideally because of the pretty nice cooldown on 10 points as well as 33% elemental damage reduction. And last but not least, we also have Star Pact. This one converts, well, Aether to Cold Damage globally, which doesn't matter at all in this case. What matters though is the percent Lightning damage and also the 14% CDR. Now when we take a look at the devotions, I am using Giant's Blood for healing mainly because I don't really have any life steal or like any weapon damage percent based ability and also I can't make bad work because I don't really have the conversion for this one. I don't have any peers of vitality to lightning conversion in this build, so Giant's Blood it is. Also I went for Time Dilation which works very well with Giant's Blood as well as with Arcanist in general, like it works very well with Devastation offensively and works very well with Mirror of Erectiles and Nullification defensively. Now since I already went up to 8 reds and 18 blues for time dilation, I also went to Spear of the Heavens, which needs just like 2 more blue and that's it. And it's also one of the best lightning devotions in a way around. Also mandatory for every single lightning devotion is the Widow, because of the Arcane Bomb active, which gives me 35% lightning resistance reduction, which is crucial for any lightning build. And also I went for the Rowan's Crown Devotion to give me 32 flat elemental resistance reduction, so basically also lightning resistance reduction. And the remaining devotions are a mixture of fillers to just get the affinity, and some things to also further focus on the health regeneration part or like spirit part, such as for example Harvestman's, which gives me 4% spirit, and also like health, energy, energy regen, health regen, which is pretty nice for a castle like this as well. And yeah, the others such as Jackal, Viper, Satyr's Guide, Eel, and Lotus are mostly used for affinity, but they are like pretty decent, like physical resistance here, physical resistance here, percent reduced elemental resistances here and OA here. I mean, that's percent reduced elemental resistances only works when you have weapon damage, uh, which in this case I had only through Seed of Skies, and Seed of Skies has like 75% weapon damage, so this will like effectively reduce any resistances by 15% instead of 20%, but that's like not too terrible for a caster. And actually it has 70% weapon damage, so it would reduce like by 14% not 15. Also I'm gonna show you how to do these devotions from scratch real quick. So we're gonna undo here, and first of all you wanna aim for Widow, because Widow has the Latin resistance reduction, right? So you probably want to go for something like Idol, Satyr's Guide or Eel Ferns for leveling. And then also for the greens you want something like Raven, for example, early on this is not too bad. And then you can get Widow. And I actually leveled this character with Chosen Sky Shot, right? So you would probably bound this to Chosen Sky Shot right now, or like Curse of Frailty, depends like what you're using at this point of the game round. And now you want to also go for Rowan's Crown. But for Rowan's Crown, you actually need to get Harvestman's Scythe first, and for Harvestman's Scythe, you're gonna need Lotus. So we're gonna take the points and crossroads here and then equip Lotus. 
Now you have the yellow zone you need for the harvest months, you also need the purple right? So for purple we could choose whatever you want actually, it doesn't really matter too much because you're gonna respect us anyway. Like the purple point here and then you can choose for example, say, I don't know, Empty Throne has a pretty nice resistances for leveling right? And then you're gonna choose harvest months and Rowan's Crown. You could actually also like get Rowan's Crown first if you wanted to at this point right? But just to, I don't know what you're using here, like Devastation maybe, Doom Bolt, whatever right? I mean, you probably won't be leveling with Doombolt on this unless you already found the dagger that converts Doombolt to lightning, right? Probably will be using Doombolt at this point actually already. Then you want to use Harvest Man Scythe, right? You want to get this one. And you can retrieve the point from Empty Throne. And you can start going for Giant Blood because you do want to get a heal. Probably have been dependent on HP pots for way too long now. So you want to get that additional heal here. And for that, you want to go for Jackal. Get the Jackal. Get the Giant's Blood, get all of the points, like get the active first, obviously. Put this to, I don't know, Arcane Will if you have it already, like any other um, aura, such as Iskandras, for example, right? That's fine as well. We have Behemoth. Now you can respec Raven and the green point here. You don't need these anymore. And now you want to make your way towards Time Dilation and Spear of the Heavens. So for those two, you just need the Viper and the EL Devotion. And then we have the 20 blues that we need for both of these. And which one you choose here first is actually up to you. And I would probably actually choose Spear first, because Spear has like more levels to level. This has up to 15 levels, this has up to 10 levels only, so I guess Spear should be chosen first. I would probably pick Spear before Hourglass for sure. Alright, so let's finally talk about the gear. Well, the Storm Herald is obviously the weapon that this build is focused around. In this case, I have a Rune Castle of Thunder, which gives me plus 2 Doombolt, plus 2 Stormcaller's Pack, plus 2 Thermite Mine. I mean, except for the plus 2 Thermite Mine, the other two are like the base of the item anyway and like plus two thermite mine doesn't matter in this spot as well but yeah rune castles of thunder did give you pretty nice a lot of damage like up to 400 percent as you can see here and also this item is obviously very nice because it does have this 100 percent chaos and 1 percent vitality lighting conversion so this is mandatory for the build and you can get this item as early as act 3 or normal so you can start playing this build rather early and finding or farming one of these in the end game is actually not as hard as it used to be because of the affix drop changes from the last patch now obviously the obvious choice for this would be to go Shaman Secondary. When I first saw this weapon I knew people were gonna do that anyway. And yeah, that build has already been showcased by for example Armored Otter on YouTube as well, right? So I wanted to like do a little bit less conventional build with this. So in this case, because Doom Bolt is like a CDR based ability, I wanted to combine it with a class that has CDR. In this case, Arcanist, and Star Pract even has lightning damage. So it kind of fit pretty nicely here. And then I didn't really know what to pair with Doom Bolt. Because like Doombolt as a standalone ability is in my opinion never really enough. I mean it's only a 12 skill point standalone skill right so it's kind of not like the best ability to use as a standalone ability for a build. And this is great for single target obviously but you need something to complement this for AoE at least. Yeah Devastation works pretty nicely for AoE for Arcanist. And then I saw this offhand and I thought well yeah just do Devastation right. And then I saw that Renefirius linked me his Lightning Devastation Sork which then pretty much inspired me to do this offhand as well. I like to combine this offhand with this main hand. Then I'm using Covenant of the Three. I mean, that's pretty much mandatory for pretty much any Doombolt build. It's really, really great for Doombolts. As well as these Rift Warped Grasp gloves here, which are also very, very insanely good for Doombolt. Combined with Logorian shoulders, which come with a base 4% average OA and DA, as well as plus 3 to Doombolt and also some physical resistance. And then I rode Clerics of Fortitude on top of that, giving me like damage to undead, physique, percent health, flat DA, as well as pierce and stun resistance. So yeah, this is pretty great. For the metal, I went with the Mythical Mark of Calamitious Desires because of the plus 3 to Vulnerability and Star Pact. This is pretty nice, and it also has Elemental Damage and Lekriku Damage. And it also has Elemental Damage, so it worked pretty nicely for a Lightning Caster as well. Overall, I think this is one of the best Warlock medals there is in the game, so yeah, this is great here as well. For the belt, I'm using Mythical Phantom Threat, Girdle for plus 1 Arcanas and like insane OA and also Elemental Damage. Pretty nice as well here. And also actually the 10% physique reduction for armor does help with like having to put less points in the physique and being able to put more points in the spirit for the spirit dump. For the Radek to further like play around the CDR thing, Eternity is obviously one of the best choices here. If you don't want the CDR here though, you can also just use Serenity instead. Maybe I would not have died with the Serenity on. But yeah, I think especially for softcore, Eternity is like the way to go. For pants and chest, I'm basically using like one of the best standalone items for casters, especially elemental casters and spirit dump casters. Arcane Harmony Legends gives you DA, which again make you have to put less points in physique because physique gives DA right, and if you get flat DA from like other sources, you don't have to use physique for DA. And also it gives you flat spirit, which is also great for like percent spirit passive, such as inner focus. So yeah, this one just fits perfectly here. 
And for the chest, we're using Fate Weaver's Raiment, which is arguably like the best defensive chest for casters in the game as a standalone. So if like if you don't need the slot for like any other set piece, for example, feel free to always use Fate Weaver's Raiment because like Prismatic Aura, look at this, right? 15% Pierce, Poison, Vet, Aether, Chaos, Elemental, and Bleed Rest, and also 5% Fizzerus on top on the like 3% average it already has. Like this is 8% Fizzerus, 15% all of those runs, and like. 26 to 40 percent chaos rest on top and percent spirit and health and elemental damage <laughs> like what the heck dude i don't know fate rears is like it's like crazy it's one of the best chest pieces in the game probably the best chest piece of the game actually and yeah it fits pretty nicely here as well for the rings i was actually using two piece aether storm set well the main reason for this is because of the devastation bonuses it gives me and otherwise it would have been like, pretty hard to put devastation to 25 points or like to any reasonable number and also the two piece set gives me 6% away and also both of these pieces give me percent lighting damage so they're like not too bad here i mean if you're not playing around devastation you don't need these either but yeah because i wanted to play around devastation as well this is what i have here and for the amulet i'm using storm series sapphire i think it's storm series sapphire this is very interesting because of the fire to lightning conversion which i need for devastation and also plus one arcana is not too bad resistances are not too bad percent lighting damage pretty good and also it has this like conversion to gator tempest which i don't really need but it's like a nice bonus to have on top right and last but not least i was actually using and losing a stone plate grease of flesh hike on this character mostly to like fix resistances and uh, yeah that's it use whatever you would like to hear that has good health or like resistances stand resistance right you could also like always use a pair of mythical storm titan treads instead right for like resistances stun reduction and hp as well these shouldn't be too bad here and there are like other choices as well that you can like go for also last but not least i'm using the rune of displacement here for like basically the best defensive movement augment ability in my opinion a seal of might on the offhand for resistances the aether to physical conversion actually does not matter here because i do convert the aether to lightning locally via the skill modifier on this offhand before that global Aether to physical conversion on Seed of Might takes place. And I'm using the before mentioned Seed of Skies on the main hand to allow me to use Chain Lightning as a spammable skill between Doombolt and Devastation. Also, I wanna quickly highlight the attributes here. So, Physique, Cunning, and Spirit. I have zero points of the Cunning here. I have 25 points of the Physique only, which is like barely enough for me to equip all these items. I think the Boots are probably like the one that needs the most here. So yeah, the Boots require 778 Physique here, but this belt reduces Physique requirement for armor by 10%. So this actually needs like 700 or something like that in reality. So these boots actually need like something like 701 or 2 physique. But I chose to go for like a little bit higher than that because I wanted to have like at least 2.8k DA. I think like 2.8k is like the absolute bare minimum that you should go for. If you have anything less than that, you're just gonna die on hardcore at least. I mean, I even died with those DA, so maybe I was too greedy here as well and then like put all the remaining points into spirit even the last three points that i would have gotten here i would have probably put them into spirit because spirit if you have ways to like scale it pretty nicely such as inner focus right which gives you like 28 percent spirit and combining that with devotion such as harvest man which has like another four percent spirit and also arcane harmony legends which gives you like another huge chunk of flat spirit big spirit done pretty nice because you do also get hp from those and you also get percent magical damage from this right so like another 953 percent lightning damage here which will be added to the lightning damage over here on the second page so this basically has 2.249 percent lightning damage plus 950 so in total we have around 3.2k percent lightning damage here but yeah since there's no further gameplay that i can show you i'm just gonna thank all of you guys for watching this build and i hope you like this hashtag dead build and i also want to thank all of my patreons for supporting me and also all of my twitch subscribers for supporting me on twitch as well and i hope to see you around on one of my next builds or streams